Welcome, Facebook friends, to a, another session of College Prep Course, College Preparation. Cindy, in two weeks, August 19th, we'll be back on campus. So we are preparing ourselves. Yes. And it's very important if you're a student, you need to prepare yourself for the college experience. And that's what we're trying to do prepare the students, prepare you parents for what you're allowed to be uh, uh, in encountering as your students go away to college and often hear points of view and philosophies that are entirely different from the way they've been brought up in church, where they've been brought up by their parents. Um, you might, uh, your father might be a businessman, a, a, in management in some sort of corporation um, if and you'll go to school and you'll discover that the uh, that many of the professors uh, regard him as a uh, uh, exploiter of the poor capitalist pig. yeah yeah capitalist pig that's the term you know you bring that up Cindy reminds me of an incident at uh, I believe it was at uh, UCLA uh, many years ago there was a man in a uh, a, a beret selling a copy of the communist worker and he was uh, trying to distribute it amongst the students but he had a price for it I forget what it was maybe a dollar or something and, and I, I commented I said young man I'm so proud of you you're selling newspapers many uh, great capitalists got their job starting in life as a lowly paper boy Maybe you'll be a corporate leader or a great capitalist uh, someday. Uh, uh, save that money and prepare it, invest it later. And he's cursed me again, you capitalist pig. And, and he went away, but the students laughed. They, they, uh, they got the point. But of course, most of your professors are more uh, subtle um, than this man and his uh, red beret. Uh, they're not going to tell you they're communists. They're not going to tell you they're socialist. And, and I don't think most students really, I've discovered, know the difference between uh, capitalism and socialism. They, they've come to think that socialism is something good. It used to be that people with a, a socialist uh, mentality would try to uh, hide it, use other terms, because socialism was an unpopular term. Uh, in, in, in America, but now you have uh, uh, people running for president, go openly uh, socialist and want to give everything away. And it's become a big issue in our uh, society today. And the Democrats have uh, been essentially uh, taken over by the socialist. Um, communism, you know, that boy selling the communist worker in the communist manifesto Karl Marx defined communism in one line, the abolition of private property. The foundation of capitalism is private property. You have that right. Mm -hmm. So he was going to the very foundation of our society, private property, private ownership of the means of production. And I might add, the Bible endorses uh, private property. It sure does. Uh, the Ten Commandments, two of the Ten Commandments would address that. You know what those would be, Cindy? Let's see. Thou shalt not steal. That's a good place to start. Thou shalt not steal. Steal implies uh, ownership. Who, so we own our property, we own our house, uh, we own our automobile, hopefully, and uh, so it, it belongs to us. And, and to steal from them, whether you do it, whether the government does it or the individual does it, it's still stealing. And the Tenth Commandment, of course, also, thou shalt not yes. covet thy neighbor's house. Let's see the public property, but thy neighbor's house, thy neighbor's wife, thy neighbor's servant. Mm -hmm. That's good. You are my property, Cindy. Yes. When I say I like that, that, when I say that on campus, 
uh, students get quite offended. And uh, because that's because they have a socialist mentality. Mm -hmm. We highly respect private property. I value my property. I take care of my property. Yeah, I have a lot invested in my property. And so I try to take the best of care. I like my property looking good. So Cindy gets to go out to these stores and orders everything on the internet. It seems like today. Amazon. Uh, yeah, it seems like we have a package coming through the mail every day now. Uh, something on the front porch, you can do that under a capitalistic society. You go to the socialist country and the shelves are often empty. It's hard to get uh, often consumer goods. It's hard to get the often the basics of life. Uh, meat and potatoes. I love being able to order the groceries and have them delivered. Yes. That's a blessing. Social, uh, capitalism has provided the highest standard of living for the most people with the most liberty in the history of the world. Amen. So we're thankful for that. And people on the campuses want to enjoy all these blessings. You know, it's mind-boggling what someone would sacrifice and pay to get an education from an American university because we are so blessed but then here at the university they have no appreciation for it all their blessings and advantages that the free economy has brought them and then all they want to do is badmouth basically the hand that feeds them yes and they, they take it for granted in other words whereas oftentimes um, Oh, people that come in here from foreign countries where they've not had economic liberty, where you're not able to enjoy the fruit of your own labor, they appreciate the American system. And they make it work in their lives. And you've had, oh, Vietnam War, uh, you had your boat people coming over, and now these boat people are very often uh, uh, very uh, successful. We're not calling them boat people anymore. Whereas the people that have lived here for, for generations often aren't doing nearly as well because, well, you have to make a sacrifice for the present in order to uh, advance yourself and have a better future. And often people don't want to do that. So socialism, the textbook definition of socialism would be government ownership and or control mm -hmm. of the means of production, as opposed to capitalism, which is private ownership and control of the means of production. Oftentimes in a socialist uh, environment or state, uh, they might allow you to officially, yes, you're, you, know, you, you have the, property deeds on uh, on your possessions on your house and so on but there are so many regulations perhaps um, that that you don't really control it mm -hmm. and so private capitalism is private ownership and control of the means of production and any society is faced with the question how or who or what determines the goods or the services that are going to be provided in a society under mm -hmm. socialism. The state determines that, and that's an, a, some sort of elitist group of uh, so-called economists or whatever uh, make the decision of, are we gonna produce guns or are we gonna produce butter? <laughs> uh, or, or whatever, they make these decisions. Uh, who makes these decisions in capitalism? Well, the free market. When you buy and when you sell on the market, you cast your vote for the goods and services that are going to be produced or provided. Under socialism, the state makes that decision. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm an author. And, uh, I don't have to go to the state uh, to get the approval of uh, my book being published, thankfully, because uh, a statist, a socialist, uh, would not 
buy you this book because the idea is in it. So I would not be able to get it published. And even in a capitalist society, um, ideally you want to find a, a publisher. Well, I might not find a, a, a publisher uh, that is interested in, uh, he should not be forced to, to uh, publish my book if he's not interested in promoting the ideas or the thought or, or think he can uh, make money for it. So then I have the choice, I can self-publish. My first book, Who Will Rise Up, was uh, uh, published by a recognized uh, uh, publisher, someone in that business. Uh, my latest books, I've just published myself, and you get them listed on Amazon.com. Come and sell them yourself. And so, uh, Free Enterprise has given us the convenience of Amazon.com, the convenience of of, uh, Wal of Walmart and Target. Target, and you go into a store and you're just overwhelmed with the goods and the services that can be produced. And whosoever, why do people go to Amazon? Because it's so efficient. You you can get the what you order the next day. Yeah. Certain companies it may take weeks. I ordered something from the internet two months ago and I still haven't gotten it. I'm afraid it may be bogus. Uh, it may be coming from China or something, I don't know. Uh, maybe it'll eventually it'll arrive, we'll see. But at any rate, I'm not gonna order from them again. But let the buyer beware. I should have checked the background of this company perhaps before I, I ordered it. But we all know the reputation of Amazon. When you order from them, you know you're gonna get it the next day. They, they're gonna guarantee it. And you know, unless something really goes wrong. So we live under a beautiful free enterprise system. Yes. And unfortunately, our state universities don't promote it. They promote just the opposite. And they'll discourage profit making. Um, okay, now the students often bring this verse up and your child may hear this in the class brought up by a professor. Uh, Brother Jed, what about Acts 4.34? Neither were there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made to every man according to his needs. So uh -huh. there was socialism in the first church. Okay, now, but notice, Cindy, where did they bring the money for redistribution? To the apostles, to the leaders of the church, and then they would redistribute the wealth and find those that had a genuine need and uh, under some maybe temporary crises uh, in their life. They did not turn it over to the state for redistribution. If people want to live communally, establish a little commune, I have no problem with that. In a free country, they ought to be able to do that. Where I have the problem is when they want to force me to be a member of their commune. I don't want to live communally. I want to live with my family, not, not several families at once. We, of course, invite families in. We often uh, glad to have them uh, visit for a, a week or so. Uh, but... Uh, uh, and, and sometimes longer than that, especially if there'd be a special need that they have. Or when we're training young preachers. Yes. And of course, we've enjoyed the hospitality. That's one way we're able to uh, uh, do what we do because as we travel, uh, local Christians open up their home uh, to our team and we save a lot of money that otherwise we'd be going to motels and we're usually fed better and. And uh, we, of course, enjoy the fellowship. They seem to uh, enjoy our fellowship. So that's good. And by the way, Cindy, I'm glad you brought that up. Now, uh, you might want to lay your money at these apostles' feet. <laughs> uh, uh, Sister Cindy and I. An apostle, the letter, letter means one sent forth. And of course, we've been sent forth by the Holy Spirit to spread the good news, the gospel, to address the issues of the day, to teach these students the ways of righteousness, the ways of holiness. 
the ways that God wants to bless them. Now watch it, Brother Jed. If you're asking for an offering, someone might quote 1 Timothy 6.10. For money is the root of all evil. Well, Cindy, you conveniently took out one word. The love of money uh, is the root of all evil. And of course, that cannot be taken absolutely. And other translations bring this out. It's the root of all kinds of evil. The love of money. And, you know, some people, their primary interest in life is pursuing wealth. There's nothing wrong with pursuing wealth, but we want to pursue wealth in order to establish God's covenant in the land. We want to pursue, uh, pursue wealth for, and be productive. See, wealth isn't just something out there. Uh, wealth needs to be produced. And the problem with socialism it takes away the incentive to be productive, to, to produce, mm -hmm. uh, because you can't enjoy the fruit of your own labor. And so, as all socialists do, is divide up existing wealth. They, you know, they make smaller and smaller pieces of pie, and they, but they don't start uh, redistributing that pie, cutting up the pie, uh, for the general populace until they take out a very large slice for themselves uh, to run the functions of government. Well, what about the accusation that all capitalists are greedy and selfish? Well, of course, you know, some are uh, greedy and selfish, uh, but, but they are, are all not, and, and some, but capitalism will reward the capitalist who is providing goods and services at a price people are willing to pay. Whoever does that most efficiently. Now, if he's doing it for good reasons, to advance the kingdom of God primarily, and, uh, then that's fine, we, we commend him. If he's doing it out of reasons just for personal greed, well, that's, mm -hmm. God will have to deal with them on that, and that's, uh, and he and he will be uh, he will be judged for that. But still, I'm going to if if a atheist is offering me a better deal uh, and and a, a better product, especially uh, than than a Christian, I'm probably going to do business with that atheist. And so it's in it's in his interest to establish himself as an honest businessman. Because uh, if he's a dishonest man, businessman, a uh, word will soon critically get around and, uh, and, and people are going to start stop doing business with him. So even their atheists can build up a, a good reputation of being a good businessman and providing good products at a reasonable price, even though they may do it for a totally selfish reason. Not, they're not motivated by benevolence. So capitalism that. can bring the best out of people. It sure does. I know I've been doing my plexus business for going on three years, three uh -huh. years in November, and we do not call ourselves a Christian company, but our president and CEO both are so dedicated to having a company of integrity. It's so important to us to keep our A1 business rating for example. And even if somebody is trying to do something shady on our, against our company, for example, I had one customer that wanted a $700 refund. And really, she didn't deserve it, but I just, she was bad-mouthing the company a little, and I wrote Flexus an email about it. I didn't even demand that she get a refund. I felt like she was kind of um, taking advantage of us. They immediately gave her the refund. They gave her the benefit of the doubt. They gave her the money back that she didn't even deserve. And of course, that's the mentality of capitalism historically that the customer is always right. And you give them what they want and we're here to serve them. And also our country, our um, company is so committed to creating quality products and 
making our customers happy. And they also teach us that if we're going to do a good job and be successful, the most pe successful people in the business are ones that grow as an individual, that truly want to serve others. And in fact, they tell us don't even use the word sales because nobody wants to be sold. Uh, now, I don't really agree with that. I don't know what you think. I'm not embarrassed or ashamed that I'm selling something because I'm proud of my company and proud of my product. But their mentality, the reason they're against that is nobody wants to be sold. People want um, to be blessed or have their needs fulfilled. And as capitalist and free and businessmen and women, we should be wanting to serve others. And if we're not willing to serve others, we can't really be successful. And you're not really happy on the inside if you're not serving others either. And the capitalist is serving the public yes. a good or a service at a price they're willing to pay. Yes. And if you don't like, the service of, of that particular uh, businessman, well, go to the next one down the street. Just say no. <laughs> uh, what have they written there, Cindy? Maybe uh, does someone have some questions there? Uh, by the way, if you have any questions, write it down here. Maybe we can uh, address any questions we have there. Are there any, is there anything on there? Go ahead and write, write folks, before we... I go off the air. Anybody? Okay, some bad boy says, I see you're suppo supporting Rasta with that hat. All praise the marijuana god. Ha <laughs> ha. I don't know what, the, what, what? that means. <laughs> well, this hey. hat is made by uh, hey. Jackson. I got several hats made from this company. Jeremy oh, Rosinski says, This is outstanding. Keep up the good work. No questions. Yeah. But if you've got a question, you can post it anytime. And if you do want to donate some of your uh, hard-earned capitalistic money, I will post the link. We will be going out to the campuses. We're in fundraiser mode right now. We're trying to get 10 people to donate $1,000 and 10 people to give, just pledge a monthly gift of any size, 10 new monthly supporters. And you can just go to our website and make a donation through Network for Good. I'll put the link. Thank you to our supporters and thank you to capitalism. We couldn't do this ministry in a socialistic country. Now, capitalism is the engine of Christian missions. Amen. Christian missions count cost money. And the capitalists, some of your uh, very successful capitalists have been big supporters of, of uh, Christian missions. Uh, uh, John D. Rockefeller uh, comes to mind. He su uh, uh, supported Christian missions. And in a socialist state, they're not going to promote or, or, or uh, provide for uh, Christian missions. So we are thankful for the capitalists out there who believe in our mission and voluntarily choose to support it. Others choose to support other missionaries. That's fine too. There are many great mission works out there. Uh, give your support to them. Uh, we encourage you if, you got a, if you've got a son, daughter, grandson, granddaughter, uh, it's a good investment if you want them to hear the gospel because chances are we'll probably be hitting uh, their campus sometime this year, not this year, uh, next year, to, uh, and, and your student, your grandchild, or, or son or daughter is allowed to hear us on campus. Uh, but, and before they get brainwashed, we want to uh, reach them. Amen. God Glory bless. To God.